So, voices, the thing that we are so afraid of in psychiatry. Anyway, if you go to a psychiatrist, and they have done this, they did this in the 70s, people went to psychiatrists and said that they heard three voices saying empty, hollow, and thud. And they were immediately admitted and med med and um, giving drugs. Strong drugs that they had to take and took a very long time before they got out, even if they said that they didn't hear the voices anymore. Just tell somebody that you hear a voice and they're going to freak out and say that you're a psychiatric patient, that you should go to a mental hospital. How about if you say that Mm, during the night I was very psychotic. I felt I was flying. And then there were a lot of people around me. Even if I was in my bed. I, I felt I was somewhere else. Hmm. Ah, you were dreaming, we would say. It was a dream. Don't get excited. It was a dream. So in our dreams we are super, super psychotic. We have hallucinations in every sense system that we have. Feeling, smell, sight, sound whatever right so for some reason luckily we haven't thought that this thing is very bad in many cultures hearing voices is a sign that you are that you are um, in contact with the ancestors and you would be looked upon as a as a, an important person shaman in your tribe uh, it's very interesting to um, read about uh, spirituality people who are people who have had near-death experiences, people who um, believe and do research on reincarnation and mediums, they would say that there was one, he was a lawyer, well-functioning lawyer with a big website, it's called um, Victor Zamet, he's an Australian, he said, finally I've been able to develop clear audience. What's clear audience? Well, it's being able to hear voices. So now He's so happy he can hear voices. And he thinks that these voices are communications from the other side. And why not? Why not? Who are other people to say that this doesn't exist? Why couldn't this exist? If people said that uh, one day you can just speak into a flat plate and uh, a few minutes later they will be able to see what you, what you have... Uh, they will see you and they will see what you have said all over the world. They can hear you and see you. Oh, we would have said that they're totally crazy. But that's what I'm doing now. I'm speaking into a small plate. I actually see my picture on this small plate. And in a little while, people all over the world will be able to see my face. Imagine how crazy this would sound like 50 years ago. They would say, you're nuts. This is impossible. Right? So, people have to have dreams. People thought that they could fly like birds, and other people said it's impossible. It's impossible for a machine to fly. Right? Now they're flying. Now they're saying it's impossible to, to have uh, small quadcopters that can lift humans. Ah, they've done it already. Right? So there has to be some crazy visionaries among us to bring humanity forward. And actually one of the mainstream psychiatrists said that we need bipolar disorder in order to get inventions. Anyway, if nobody was so-called bipolar, we wouldn't have any inventions today. People have to believe and have to have the energy to invent things. Edison would be termed totally bipolar. He hardly slept. He had hundreds of ideas that didn't work out. But he had a few good ideas that worked out and he was relentless. He, he kept on when everybody else said, this is crazy, give up. He didn't give up and he hardly slept and he, he was quite irritable at times because he slept so little probably but okay one of the biggest inventors in history so my point is that what we call psychosis and what we try to medicate away can just be an extreme variety of normal behavior it is an extreme variety of normal behavior and if it destroys the life quality, which we couldn't say in, in uh, Edison's case, he was very happy with this, but if it destroys the life quality, okay, then we can do something about it. And there are a lot of things that you can do about it. For instance, something called behavioral experiments, which are very good for um, 
trying to get an extreme variety of something down to a normal level. <coughs> I'll talk about that in another in another uh, video. But for now, normalization. What I'm doing now is saying that this these are normal phenomena. Why stress so much about them? In a way, it is the fear that we have of these things that make it a problem. In a way, these four out of five people in Bergen who, who um, hear voices but are not stressed about it, they're okay. How about if they started taking strong drugs to suppress the voices? What actually happens is that the brain fights against this right away from the first tablet. It fights, you're trying to block the dopamine. You block 70 to 80 percent of the dopamine receptors in the brain. Just this fact, this language should should make it obvious that this is probably not something good. It's like you're gumming up your locks in, in, your, in your synapses. Uh, not a good idea. The brain will fight it. How does the brain fight it? It ups the dopamine sensitivity and it makes more dopamine receptors. Okay, so you stop taking the tablet after you've taken taken the drugs for a week or two. You stop taking them and your brain has plenty, plenty, plenty of dopamine capacity, extra dopamine capacity. And it's a dopamine capacity that makes things salient. That means that a thought could get sound on it like a voice. And of course, we have thousands of thoughts every day. So suddenly you stop with the, with the, with the drug Wow, all these dopamine receptors kick in and you become so-called florid psychotic. You, you get a lot more voices if you've taken the, med taken the drugs. You will get that because you get so many more dopamine receptors. And if you do this for a few years, you can imagine how hard it's going to be to get off it. That you're going to have a lot, a lot of these symptoms when you get off the, the drugs. And this could be what is driving the whole chronicity in, in uh, schizophrenia. In a way, for people who are never drugged, what they see in Finland, people who are never drugged, you can get 80 to 90 percent to be okay within, within a year or two. In a way, they, they get support, they get to discuss their, their feelings, they, they get to discuss with the family. Okay, they are okay, it's called open dialogue. They, they have this system where when somebody wants help for voices and, and things like that, they're being met within 24 hours, them and the whole family. And they always discuss these things together. It's not behind the back of the patient. They don't try to force anything and they try to use as little drug as possible. The idea of using drugs to, to alleviate, alleviate discomfort is probably not such a good idea. How about if you broke your leg and the doctor said, oh, I have a very strong painkiller, I can give it to you, you can just walk on that leg, no problem, yeah, it's a little bit crooked here and there, but uh, uh, this painkiller is going to take care of it for you. Would that be a good idea? If we get a psychological symptom that is in a way an indication that there's something we should we should work at, for instance, strong depression because of a faltering marriage. Okay, and we just medicate it away, what's going to happen? You're not going to do anything about the marriage, right? Or the financial situation. You're just going to take it away. If you medicate away anxiety, you're never going to see that it wasn't dangerous without the drugs. How about psychosis? If we medicate it away, you're not going to do anything about the thing that was driving it. For instance, if you, if you get voices after uh, being abused, okay, maybe you should do something about the abused memories that are in a way driving the voices instead of just mm, dumbing yourself down, instead of just numbing yourself with, with drugs. You should do something about them. Get some uh, therapy, in a way, psychotherapy for this. And it's possible, it's really possible. You can, you can really get good therapy against voices. So, these things are nothing to be afraid of. They are revered in other cultures. People who hear voices and see things, they are looked upon as leaders in the community, in many, in many cultures. Why do we have to make it something sick that we drug away with drugs that are so tough on the body?